Praise the Lord. So today we want to finish our series um, that we have been doing on, this is a course we teach income generating activities. I've never taught here. So I said I'll do the four lessons. There are more others. So the first week we did the causes of poverty. Uh, I want to rephrase that. I'm trying to rewrite those things. Okay. Uh, then the second week we did the eight ways I think God provides for his people. And the last week we did assets. What do you have? So actually I want to re-emphasize that one because I didn't give you the assignment. I just told you, you need to find out what you have. So I want to talk about briefly about assets. And these things are in the Bible, okay? Then uh, I'll go to the topic of today, which is the nine, I think the nine aspects or eight aspects of money management, which it's good to know. So the lesson, what you have last week, to apply it, anything you do and analyze you have, uh, there's a, a, tech, a training in project management called asset-based community development, asset-based. So you build on what people have, not what they don't have. So you do a survey and find out what do they have, can we use. So the same thing, most times the Lord will use what you have, not what you don't have. If you have a lack mentality, the Lord struggles to work with you. Because the Lord is wondering, you keep on saying, I don't have this, I don't have this. But I've given this and this. What are you doing about what I've already given you? Okay. Uh, the lessons are being recorded, so don't worry. They're editing them. I think they finished the first editing. They are complete. So if you want, we're going to upload it for Hope Alive website or system. But we'll give you a link because we want to help people to understand this is what we teach: income generating activities in churches. And actually, after a week, we have seen churches start businesses in Ghana and Malawi, successful businesses because they realize what they have. So, let's talk about assets. So I'll ask you one question. What is money? Who knows, what is money? Money, money, money. You know that song, money, money, money. <laughs> what is money? It's a legal tender, yes. It's a means of exchange and measure of value only. So anything can be money. Before the missionaries came, quarry shells were money. In Ghana, colonnades. So money is just something you use to exchange value. You have to know the value you're exchanging. So one of the things, uh, because uh, I've traveled several countries, I take the currency. So I have Somaliland, I have Somalia, I have Sudan, no Sudan I don't think, Ghana, Burkina Faso, Malawi, Mozambique. I have those papers in my house. Do you know Mozambican money is useless here? Just a piece of paper. So I always tell people, if you realize the papers, you're carrying the Kenyan money. That's not the true wealth of the country. It's just a means of exchange. Like if I need this, you pay me this. But what most people, people want to pursue money without realizing that is not what God wants you to pursue. It's just a value for exchange. Okay? What you really need to pursue is assets. Okay? So remember what he said, what do you have? Moses was asked, what do you have in your hands? That means your skills. So assets are something, is, an asset is something or someone of any value, any portion of your property, okay? Something you can exchange to be paid. It's called an asset. So you need to evaluate what do you have. The first thing you really have is yourself. I'm hoping to write a booklet on that. When I was growing up, there are bad prayers we used to pray, and they're from the Bible. And David was notorious for praying for those, and Jeremiah, and sometimes those prophets. Where they would tell God, tell God, I'm a worm. I'm a grasshopper. No, Jesus changed that. Jesus said, you are so important that the Father can count what? The hairs on you. You are very important. Don't call yourself a worm or a grasshopper. Because when you start confessing those things, it will happen. Moses told them, because you call yourself to be grasshopper, so shall you be. So they could never defeat the giants. So those are Old Testament prayers. Don't bring them to me. Jesus. I like what Derek Prince used to say. Derek Prince used to say, Jesus Christ is the true interpreter of the Bible. And I think Jesus never proved. Please, don't hold it. Jesus came. You know, Jesus, people say, you tell people, you have heard it has been said. Eh? What was said before? Remember those sayings of Jesus? 
You've heard they have said to you like this, but I say to you, so Jesus was counseling what Moses said. I mean, Moses said, an eye for an eye. I say unto you, love your enemies. And the Jewish people do not like that one. Even me as a Christian, I don't like it. Because the, the human capacity is to take revenge. So that justice may be done. But Jesus says, no, I say unto you, love your enemies. Jesus was trying to pull the rug under the enemy. Uh, I learned that in my one books. If you want to overcome Satan, come in the opposite spirit. It's, if you come in the opposite spirit, the devil cannot even fight you. Yeah, because he has no weapon to use against you. So if it's you are dealing with proud people, come in humility. If you deal with people who are strong and uh, want to take vengeance, you come in the spirit of meekness. If people are anger, wrath, come with gentleness. You will silence them. They will not know what to do with you. Don't come the same way. Okay. So the biggest asset you have, I want you to go and read that scripture. I don't know where it is where Jesus says the Father knows what. The amount of your hairs on what? He's saying, was saying, don't worry. You are more valuable than the birds that the father feeds every day. The Lord was not saying become a bird. Hallelujah. He was just saying you're more important than the bird. So don't behave like the bird. Don't sit there waiting for the birds. Actually, even the birds get out of their house to look for food. So all I say, the implication was Jesus saying, don't worry, but do something. The father will provide. Provide. So I want to say, make sure you see yourself the Lord the way the Lord sees you. The Lord sees you as an adopted son, loved in the Lord, forgiven, valuable to his kingdom. So don't let anyone put you down that you're useless. I want to say, if people talk to you constantly like we saw the teenagers, those who are rejection, it's time to take a holiday. Okay? Because what is happening, they're putting down your value. And whenever they put down your value, that's why you find people are worthlessness. They feel I'm not important, no one will believe me. I'm dealing with a case of a neighbor, of rejection. It's a difficult case, but I told my neighbor we will try. Where this girl does not believe anything people say. Because she says, I don't have money like other people. Yet she has been promised to get a scholarship to go to school. So I told the lady, the problem is here. The problem is not her circumstances. She can't even believe you promised her you take her to school. <laughs> so what is the problem? Your mindset. Praise the Lord. Okay? Mindset can only be changed by the word of God. There is no other substitute. I always tell people, you have to give up. One, one time when, when I really want to pray, I'll confess scriptures to myself. So I can start saying, I can do all things through Christ. I can quote a lot of scriptures because I'm trying to encourage my soul that is feeling horrible. Okay? So you are an asset. Human beings... Uh, if you read Psalms chapter 2, it says God created human beings a little lower than what? Angels. angels. But human beings, through Christ Jesus, they are greater than angels. Far, far, far. No angel can be compared to a human being the value. Because human beings have capabilities angels don't have. And I thank God, Hebrews chapter 2 says, in Hebrews comments on Psalms chapter 2 says, Jesus was only created a little lower than the angels for a time. So we are only a little more than angels for a time. When the time comes, Paul says we shall judge angels. We shall judge the nations, we shall judge angels. Can you imagine you are judging a Jacobian? You must be a very good judge. So the destiny of man is great. Okay? You need to know the things, the things God has given you. It's an asset. So I want to stress, whatever asset God has given you, whether it's a calling, a gift, a talent, you need to increase it. Go for training, equip it, make sure you add value. There's always value addition. Okay? Until I met Randy Clark and until I met Bill Johnson, I never believed, because I read other books by Pentecostal Charismatics, which were very funny. They'll come and tell you if you have a gift, you just have to trust the Holy Spirit. Then Randy Clark said, and Bill Johnson, that's not true. You already God has given you, so build, work on it. Build your, you can practice word of knowledge, you can practice word of wisdom until you grow. You know when we tell people, like the people say, and I had a famous preacher friend of mine saying on YouTube, then I said, this is, he's an old man, in seventies maybe, you don't know what you're saying. When I was young, he was a good preacher for me, but now I'm saying whatever you're saying is not true. You can grow your gift, if you can grow in intercession, you can grow in leadership, what makes you think you cannot grow in wisdom? 
So all gifts, another person who wrote, because people used to argue with him, Peter Wagner used to say, I don't believe what Pentecostals charismatics believe. I believe everything is resident in you when you get born again. Grow it. You know, when you tell people that I can't do this, if you listen to what they are saying, they are running away from responsibility. So they make a mistake. Is the Holy Spirit that made a mistake? No, it's not the Holy Spirit. You never grew your gift. You never grew your calling. Stop blaming the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has given you, make sure you grow it. Tell your neighbor, grow it. Grow it. Yes. And that's why I tell people, practice, practice, practice. Me, I say, I will practice all my gifts until it becomes a grace and an anointing that I can live in. That I don't have to fast for 40 days to hear a word of knowledge. It's just a training of my hearing. But this is called also, it also allows the spirit of passiveness. I'm talking about assets. God has given you this, but you're waiting for the moving of the wings. Like that David, eh? David was told by the Lord, when the wings starts moving, the trees attack. So some Christians think that's good theology. It was for David only. Please don't make it for yourself. Jonathan did the opposite. Did Jonathan wait for the moving of the trees? No, the guy just woke up and went to look for Philistines. And the Lord backed him up. So there's always grace and faith. Jonathan moved in faith. David was waiting for the leap because he was a young man. Do you know at that point, I can tell you the truth, Jonathan was more mature than David. Because yeah. sometimes you're waiting and the Lord says, I'm waiting on you. And that's a difficult thing I've seen many Christians. Don't wait. Me only, there's a time the Lord told me, because I used to suffer from, I'm a phlegmatic, huh? So I saw a problem of uh, taking too long to make decisions. I pray for six months, I do research. One day the Lord came and told me, you are lazy, <laughs> number one. If I tell you something, don't pray about it, just go and do it. Then he told me, if you make a mistake, at least you tried. So I realized the more I tried, the more he backed me up. Even in your weakness, how many? Hey, Wakoba. I'm going to hear the details. I wanted to see you guys on Sunday, or the people who went to Vega, or the students. Do you know, those meetings you went, there are many things that was happening. And sometimes, people may say, okay, let, let me refresh it. You may think if you go to a meeting, the Holy Spirit is moving because of you. Those people may be fasted 40 days before you arrive. So don't take the glory. But sometimes they didn't fast. You fast? You fasted. So you never know what is happening mm. when now every meeting everyone is manifesting. Why are they not manifesting in their churches? Mm. No, I can tell you the truth because it happened in Bugoma. Mm. This is a political meeting there. People want politics there. They are manifesting, eh? Hallelujah. Mm. I realized, I tell people, I realized something has happened. The people who have been coming here for Tuesday prayer meeting, if you have never believed they are carrying something, please believe me. Amen. The reason you are not manifesting here because you are okay. Me and another but one, they left. Mm -hmm. William, they left. They but left. when God transforms that atmosphere to a place, hey, you see demons manifestation. It's the, you have passed from a gift mm -hmm. to a mantle. Mm -hmm. You just need to appear. Amen. Like, you know the young people. Remember, the, I, there's a reason I took all these young people. You know when they went, when you go to Kupima, young people are Kupima Kwanza. So in current share, I had the courage to do the altar call, but that was the first time to teach those things. So I said, I'll do the altar call. After the altar call was done, something was broken in the spirit. Now we could do any altar call, the whole day. Even the pastors were there, were wondering, are these the same kids you have been teaching for three days in the youth camp? You know what the Lord told me? It's, it's not a good thing. Sometimes the Lord can tell you something that does not sound good. So one day the Lord told me, the church is full of sound doctrine. And it's good. But my people are suffering because they don't have sound emotions, sound hearts. So people are theologically correct. They can challenge you on end times, they do everything. But they have unforgiveness. Yeah, the Lord told me the church needs to teach these things because there's no need of having a sound mind, a sound doctrine, and even your mind is confused. The church has to do holistic ministry in this season than never before. I meet people who have nice theology, but when you Sit to them, they have unforgiveness, they have rejection, they have these issues against their parents. I used to ask, how comes this thing has not gone to their hearts? Because they have never been taught. Okay? I, I teach assets because when you know what you carry, you walk in confidence. 
No one should tell you you don't have anything. It's not true. Even if you are not saved, you have something from the other kingdom. <laughs> the only way you, you, you may have nothing is, I used to tell people when I was young, the only people who don't have wishes are people who have died and never say their wishes. But any person on this way, if you ask someone, what is your wish? I would like to stay here, I would like to go here. It's a wish. And it's the God because it's a will. So no one is empty. No, no, I put it so Every human being has desires and dreams. And sometimes they express them to their children. I wish my children could build me a house. I wish I could go and see my grandmother. Don't ignore those wishes because like a will. If he had to tell one day, hey mom, I heard you talking about you want to go to Mombasa. I'll go to put you on SGI and take you there. Because it's a desire. She has this desire to see Mombasa. And you are here. You have been to Mombasa ten times. <laughs> it's what? I'm talking about assets. There's something you can offer to give them a breakthrough. Okay? So don't ignore your assets. A human being is an asset. There is no human being God created for nothing. There's none. If you read the Bible, me, I like the book of Judges and the kings, especially judges. The judges were funny people. One was left-handed, another one was a child of a prostitute, another one was, had issues with his parents, Samson had issues with parents. Mm -hmm. Samson was a strong-willed child. Anything the parents said, he said, no, I will do my own thing. And God still backed him up, because God said he was using him to travel the what? The Philistines. So God needed a strong-willed child. Okay, believe me, God needed that troublemaker. So God, the Bible says God was looking for a way to start a war with the Philistines. So he looked for Samson, who would not listen to his parents. So he had a gift <laughs> that God needed at that time because Israel had become passive. They were coexisting with the Philistines as if nothing was happening. God was not happy. Samson. Okay, so. If you read the judges, you read the kings, you read the apostles, all these people had gifts. Yeah. Don't despise yourself, please. Don't despise. Use whatever the Lord has given you. What are you doing to develop it? So may I believe in training. Be trained, be equipped in your area of specialization so that you can become valuable and become a blessing to the kingdom or people can pay you. So look at yourself. Can you look at yourself? You are an asset. What are you doing about your asset? The devil was an asset before he fell. Mm -hmm. In Exodus, in Ezekiel 28, the Bible says he was made of what? Instruments. The guy was a musical machine, and he knew it. The Bible says he tampered what what in his body, because he was the worship chair. His work was lead worship. Before now, when he fell, who took over the mantle? King David. Do you know King David took over that mantle? David leads the worship in heaven. Yeah, people have gone to heaven, they find David leading worship. You see, everything the devil had, he had precious stones. Eh? You find now, he fell millions of years ago. When uh, Moses built the tabernacle, what does God do? He takes those precious stones and puts on them. The priest will present the tribe, showing Israel is important. Then he goes to the New Testament. He says what in the book of Revelation? And I see the city. He's made of what? Precious stones, which is the body of Christ. So God has taken those things, Satan left. He didn't give to another angel. He deposited everything in a human being. So some of us are, uh, uh, some of us are topaz, you know topaz? Mm -hmm. Me, I know I'm an emerald, I've told him around. Emerald are worshippers. That's the stone for uh, Judah. The other day, I had an encounter in the Ascension class where I was told I was also half Jasper. So those stones, the Lord took away from the devil permanently and gave to human beings. So as you pull the, that stone represents a character trait. When you pursue the Lord, he adds you. you know the Lord wants a beautiful church? Mm -hmm. He says you, you can have emerald. You, you can have agate. So those things you read in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, all of them is the body of Christ. That's why it says we are living stones being built together so that the Lord can live with us, what? With the Holy Spirit. So no human being is useless. Please. Maybe you just don't know the precious stone in your cup. 
can. Ask the Lord of these 12 stones, 24 stones, which one is mine? The Lord will tell you. But then Israel had what? The signs for the animals that represented every tribe. So the donkey was who? You know, those, if you read the, the Jewish scholars, uh, the snake was Dan, uh, Judah was the lion, donkey, I think, was Zebulon. Israel had three sides, color, stones, and animals. God has taken everything and put in a human being. So the qualities of a lion, when you get born again, Jesus, the lion of Judah, start roaring in your life. Um, I really felt this one is important. Please don't walk around thinking you're useless. God can never use you. It is not true. That is a lie of the enemy. And don't agree with the enemy. Okay? So anything that adds money to your pocket, it's called an asset. So remember I say money is a value of exchange. So money is not real wealth. Okay? God has not given the world money. He has given the world assets. Did you know 60% of gold is in Africa? 60%. Russia has cobalt. Don't know, manganese. Ghana has manganese and gold. Kenya has even rare earth stones that they have just discovered. Okay, this one I know. For the last few years, they've been surveying the country looking for all the minerals. I think they have finished that project. To know all our precious stones. So we are hoping the next president will help us. You may be sitting on a territory that has rare earth or gold and you don't know. Because they, they have done survey using uh, infrared systems, so they know what is happening. Okay? So the same thing, we can take that and exchange it for value to build ourselves. So what is a liability? You've heard those liabilities? A liability is an obligation, a debt. You are responsible to, you owe someone. If you owe someone anything, even the debt of love, it's a liability. So make sure you love people. Okay? Now the funny thing, to get assets you need money, and to get liabilities, to pay liabilities you need money. So money is just an exchange. Money is just an exchange. Don't take money seriously. But what do you have that you can exchange for value? So let me read you quickly the people who had assets in the Bible. Abraham, it's found in Genesis 13 verse 2, Genesis 24 verse 35. Abraham had livestock, silver, gold, sheep, cattle, and servants. So did Isaac and Jacob. And the way, if you do a word study, the way they go those things, some of them were supernatural. God just transferred to them as they were in the right place at the right time. So many times the church will struggle with these things, but we don't know these resources God has already given us. Hallelujah. They are not in heaven. Tell your neighbor they are not in heaven. There is no gold there. The one in heaven belongs to the Lord. <laughs> The one of the earth, he'll give to the earth. So we need to know when you hear, you know, sometimes I sit down, I have a book, a big book, I've not read a lot. It, it traces the 5,000 years for Africa trade and the, the, the resources Africa has for 5,000 years. It's amazing. Do you know Africa is in the Bible? Yeah, Isaiah 19, Ezekiel, when you're talking about Babylon and Solomon, Solomon will get his gold from where? From Africa, gold of Ophir. Ophir is in Somaliland. When he wanted to get incense, he got from Somaliland and Yemen. Solomon was a trader, he had even ships. So these things are on the earth. So nobody, I find out, people, when we struggle, it's not a struggle of the availability of resources, it's a struggle of know how, understanding, knowing what is where, so that I can partner with the Lord to transfer them in my hands. Whether it's the church, whether it's businessmen, whether countries, we all struggle. The most powerful movies I've seen, when I was young, when I was young, I watched these movies, you know, there's assassination, the assassination of this president. Then we started watching the modern movies. They steal secrets. Because countries are run on secrets. That's all. So why is the church not also asking God for secrets? <laughs> God give us know-how and understanding in this area so that we can help people. I'm not saying the body of Christ, per se, individuals who can trust God for a, a, a business breakthrough. God, I want a business breakthrough. Give me understanding so that it's God will not drop the asset in your hands. He'll give you the know-how how to get it because it's on the earth. It's not in heaven, okay? Another person of David. David, I like David 
Our book about from Waiwanko talk about the seven mountains. He says David was the first king to make Israel to be from a slave nation to an empire in 40 years. When David took over, Philistines were colonizing the whole country. In 40 years, by the time he handed over to Solomon, Israel was the richest country on the earth. How did David transfer his wealth? Warfare. <laughs> so spiritual warfare works, that's one way. Warfare, David will go kill those people and bring things to the land. One day he had a prayer meeting, he fed everyone in the country. The day who will feed all of us. Yeah. After the prayer meeting, Solomon, when he prayed, Solomon gave food to everyone, go home and have a celebration. Do you know for a person to remove everything from his treasury, to feed like, let's say two million people, maybe Israel that time was five million people, because they left Israel, Egypt, and there were three million. That is a lot of resources. So God was trying to show it is possible for the church to learn, and David knew how to use the resources. He took the resources and used it to build the temple of the Lord. As you use the resources to build what? The church of Jesus Christ. Through missions, through support. These resources are not ours. They're supposed to be used to reach people, train people, and equip people. Another person is uh, okay, Lydia. Lydia was a businessman. She used to trade in what? Purple cloth that is very expensive. And Elisha was a businessman. He, was, he had bulls for digging. He had tractors those days. And he had 12 bulls for digging people's land they paid him. So Elisha was a businessman. Joseph was an administrator of wealth. Egypt. Lord Jesus. Jesus was what? A carpenter and a builder of houses. And Jesus knew accounting because he had a treasurer. Okay? So, you no, know, sometimes the, the things that when I was growing up, the things people portray Jesus. This sorry man, sorry man. It's not true. Jesus was a very intelligent person who knew business, who knew how to teach people business. He even knew how to get resources supernaturally. He told Peter, throw net the other side. Twice. You know, every time I meditate that scripture, every year I read that scripture, the Lord just tells me, don't spiritualize this thing. Please. Jesus knows where your resources are. Just throw the nets there. Yes, don't say that he's talking about salvation. Fish is... No, no. They needed money, they needed breakfast fish. So the Lord told me one time, God knows where your resources are. Ask him. And if he tells you to do something, do it. He did it to Peter the first time. The second time, there's a time they wanted to pay taxes. He told them, go to the event, throw your money, you'll get taxes to pay for yourself and for me. Did Jesus knows which fish had their money. Hallelujah. And that's the Savior we follow. Amen. Since we follow a Savior who knows where our resources are. Yes. Okay. Don't, 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 don't have this thing the Lord doesn't know what he's doing. That my, my situation is too difficult for him to understand. And he's wondering, I own the cattle, you know, those scriptures we quote. We only say, when you quote those scriptures, be careful. <laughs> One day the Lord will test you that he owns there cattle on a thousand hills. All the silver and gold is mine. Which one do you have? <laughs> So me, those are scriptures when you quote, be careful because the Lord will put a demand on you. Can we work together so that I help you? Okay? Okay. So you're going there. So what is the difference between income and expense? <coughs> income is money received, expense is money spent, that's all. Then, types of income, this one you need to add because when I teach the next session, there are only three types of income. If you master this thing, it will help you. Number one, this earned income which you get through salaries and wages. That's why I talked the other lesson. One way God provides for people, you do what? You have to ask God to bless the work of your hands. You have to work. So, and you are going to see scriptures, wages is not a gift. <laughs> it's repeated in the Bible. Wages, because you work, you work. Another one is uh, investment account, you know, resources, where you buy shares and bonds in a company, then every year, half shares in society, not a lot, very little, because they refused to sell us when they wanted more. But Falcom is faithful to send me 345 units per year. <laughs> oh. And my shares value have grown. I bought 900, 10 bob, now they are 30 bob. So, so shares, sometimes instead of trying to start your own company, why can you invest in Safaricom, Kenya Airways, these huge companies that are bricked up, they're making a lot of money. Do you know they are paid managers who can do that? Instead of trying to run your own business, let them run for you and you can suck them in an annual general meeting. That's the good thing. 
But there's this thing in human beings, okay? I have to do things on my own. I don't trust anybody. But you're not a specialist. You have no clue even where Mutumba comes from. You know, I've seen people enter into business and they have no clue. God just showed me in a dream. If God shows you in a dream, please travel to that country to find out. You hear what I'm saying? Let me tell you a true story. There's this church, in this book called The Shepherd's Staff. There's this church that saw a vision. The young people saw a vision that they need to go to this island and do what? Plant a church. So they mobilized resources. True story. They went to the Caribbean. When they landed in the plane, there was no one on the island. Just an island. So they thought if there's an island, there must be people. It's not true. There are no people in Arctic Circle or Antarctic. There are big continents. But everyone who lives there is an explorer. So research, it's called site visit, is important. If God shows you, go and confirm. So of course they had to give the report to the church. It was not a good report. Okay. So I always say subjective knowledge should be confirmed with objective knowledge. If God shows you something, tell the Lord to confirm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Otherwise, God will, not, will tell you you did not hear what I was saying. You read with the little you know. So confirm, confirm, okay? Another, another source of income is passive income. So the first one is earned income, portfolio income from shares, university people's companies. And then passive income comes from business, if you have a business, or rent. And a true business is a business that does not employ you. If a business employs you, you are an employee. You are self-employed, but you are still an employee. A true business is a business should run without you being there. But the mindset is different. There's a book I call, I, I, Michael is having challenges in his workplace, okay? He had this prophetic word from Prophet Josh, okay? So, and actually, the company he joined, now he's a manager. He's managing engineers, software engineers. So we started, we pray in the office on Saturday. So Josh picked it, our team picked it. We need to pray for him the month of March. So me, I prayed. Then I asked him, what is happening? Then after, after March, I called him. Do you know what he told me? It was crazy in that company. The top people are quarreling the engineers under him. And he's in the middle. So I told him, Michael, I have a book. Go read this book to help you. It's called Emit Management. You know, Emit, how to run a company. Because managers always get banned. Because the shareholders want profit. And maybe the, the things they have put in place are not helping the workers. So everyone, to come back and answer. No one has seen. It's just misunderstanding. I told Michael, this is a misunderstanding. She said they went for this staff meeting where all the engineers were crying. Crying. I said, wow. Then you have a lot of work. I told him, if you read that book, it will help you. And you can tell those managers to stop what they are doing. Because they are killing those guys. They are not helping them. Okay? Productivity has to be created an environment. I'm trying to talk about passive income. So when you're doing a business, you have to make sure the business grows, that it doesn't employ you. Hallelujah. Now that Charlie has retired, hallelujah, he'll come and teach these things here. Because Charlie, Charlie runs an international business. He, it pays him. It buys him a car every year. He doesn't work there. The guy is very sharp in business. Very sharp. Because he said, I don't want a business. Me, I want to serve God. I don't want to. I don't want a business. She told me one day I asked him, one day I asked him, Charlie, how did you set up them? I said, my partner is a very good director. They're buddies. Very good director. Then he told me, we went to the company, they sell medical equipment, second hand, refurbished. Then he told me, the most important person in this company is the receptionist. Mm -hmm. And the marketing manager. He told me if they don't do their work, everyone will be stuck. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, the simple business you run it, buy low, sell high. That's the key to any business. Buy low. You know, I thought that is, doesn't make sense. When I started thinking of every business, you buy low, sell high to get your margin. Mm -hmm. And he told me, if you do like that, you'll have a business. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not difficult. Uh, Blake, our uh, chairman, one of our partners, he's, he's an insurance guy. Remember the, cabinet, the time he came and taught business models? You remember? Yeah. Do you know that thing is very unique? When you go to universities in Kenya, they never teach you business model. They teach you business planning. You cannot have a plan of a model you don't have. Mm -hmm. A model tells you where your revenue will come from before you have a plan. So I always say, this is my confession, whoever wrote those textbooks, they're deceiving us. That's how businesses are struggling in this country. 
But if you drive down a business model, you will know even before you start the company where revenue will come from, before you have a plan to implement it. They don't teach those things. Go and Google business modeling. Google has a business model. Amazon has a business model, and it's very Uber. They have a business model. You just wake up, me, I'm going to start a business. If I ask you how you do you make money, I will trust the Lord. <laughs> you know, God does not live in our realm. So don't tell God, I'll trust God. God tells you to do homework and work and test out your model. If you're losing money, I will list it. there's a time I had a business, by the way, renting uh, audio, uh, Christian videos. I still bought Christian videos. Do you know, I wanted to lend. People came and said, we don't want to borrow, we want to sell it. So we started selling them. Because that's what people wanted. I could not tell them, this is what my business plan says. The customer is always right. Do you know we started making money? Good money. Until it collapsed when they raised taxes. On uh, DVDs, 30%. Ooh, my business ended. But it was a good business. I was the only person sourcing Christian videos from Canada. Remember this guy who made Le Le Left Behind series? You know the Left Behind series? I was the one selling the videos and in the country all alone. I lost my business because what I'm going to teach you, I did not put in risk of taxes. So I lost my business. I cannot say it's the Holy Spirit. I should have put in the pricing tax, taxes. Okay? So I want to challenge you. Okay, let me repeat. The only way you're going to increase your income, either you earn the money, or invest shares, or bonds, or you're going to start a business and a rental business. Those are called passive income. Or you can do online business, you are you sleep, and wake up, the money is just being paid. Those businesses are there, by the way. Where you sleep, 24 hours the business run because it's automation systems. I'm learning that automation systems. You don't have to worry, just set up the system and go and sleep. Are you hearing? We want some businessmen here. Praise the Lord. We want people in the church to learn to generate income to support the kingdom of God. And then number, number, another point on that one, you always use money to get what? Liabilities or assets? Assets. But Christians, get money to get more liability? <laughs> That's a wrong. Let, let me tell you, I'll be, I told God I'll be very honest the way I told Ghanaians and, and Malawians. People have this idea. Me, I want a car. A car is a liability, my friend. Anything taking money from you, avoid it. You better use a matatu. The house you stay in is a liability because it has Kenya power to pay, water to pay. Anything taking money from you is not an asset unless the house is growing in value. So, I always tell people, don't rush to buy a car. Don't rush to buy shoes. Don't rush to buy a TV. Immediately you walk out of the showroom, when you return, they give you 70%. Mm -hmm. Just for walking out and coming back. Mm -hmm. So why, why are people so much passionate to getting liabilities? Because they want class. I want my neighbors to see that our car. But the people who train me this thing I'm grateful is new life for. I went there and I knew, I had no clue anything about managing vehicles. So Sharon Higgins and my daughter will teach you how to manage your cars using. Told me, go to AA, get this list, this is the way they manage vehicles. They taught me how to manage things without making losses. So when you write a proposal, you have to include managing of those cars. Please. Cars eat. Cars are like children. They eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I tell you. Especially when there are problems. You will pay until you sympathize with yourself. You wish this was school fees. <laughs> Sorry. So they taught me, when you're writing a proposal, make sure you root administration, running of the vehicles, fueling, fixing and maintenance, because they eat money. Mm -hmm. So a car, I always tell people, unless you have a plan to solve that problem, don't buy a car. You'll be quarreling with your wife every day. Give me money. I want to go to work. You can go work by walking in Kenya. Some of us walk from Moruma to Nairobi. You know those people walk? Mm -hmm. I've seen people walk in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can walk, you can get a bicycle, mm -hmm. you can get a motorcycle. You don't have to use a car. Or you can use a train. There are many options. Don't make it a life, matter of life and death. Because you are trying to create assets to grow your capacity to invest more. You have this famous businessman, eh? Elon Musk. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, I like him because he talks a lot. I like people talk like Trump. They're good. 
Because sometimes they spill secrets. Hey, Trump will talk until he has told us secrets. Trump told us one time, you know, me, I don't use email. So people asked him one email. He said, if you write an email, everyone will spy on you. So people asked him, how do you do business? You put it on Wells Fargo, DHL, and UPS. No one reads your letters. Do you know those things you reject? Is what the rich people use. Rich people don't write emails. But me, I need an email account. It's called the mentality of middle class. <laughs> There's a book around like that, mentality of a poor person, mentality of middle class and the rich. Rich people think very different. But then there's a way they think. And I always say to people, our father, who created this world, he was not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. So why is it we think God cannot help us to think different? I'm not teaching about what they call it. Wealth. Me of teaching principles, I've seen these things I learned from Derek Prince. Look. Is to say these things, the church, we have, we cannot struggle some things the Lord has given us principles. The Bible is the best principle book on business. Because the disciples were businessmen, our fathers in faith were business people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and Joseph. David were business people. There are not Christians coming to prayer meetings every Sunday. Say hallelujah. Even if you don't like that one. Because Daniel had no church in Babylon. He had no church. He was the church. And sometimes they can of the congregation until they have issues. Because, but Daniel ran that kingdom according to God's principles. And he told Nebuchadnezzar, this is what is going to work. The Bible says Joseph taught the Egyptian rulers wisdom for 70 years. People don't know, Joseph ruled Egypt for 70 years. He became a ruler at the age of 30. He died at the age of 110. Seven. Me, I'm praying I reach 110. At least that one. Because sometimes we reduce our capacity thinking God cannot help you. These people are normal human beings. Okay? Another thing is, so use your money. So what I normally do, I'll show you later. If you're not, if you're not have a money you're keeping aside to grow your assets, you will remain poor. I guarantee you. Okay? We're going to see why. Then the last one, learn to reduce your expenses. If you do running a business or an organization, the only two ways to run that organization to increase cash flow. Number one, increase your income or reduce your costs. There is no other magic. So I remember in LIM we do cost cutting. New life form was very, every year we have cost cutting men. We'll go to every department that was in charge. Do they need this thing? One time I found out they were sharing a printer. Everyone had a printer in every office. They didn't need four printers. We agreed the director, you wake up, go to the secretary, you get printed. Why do you need a printer in your own office? Because you know inkjet uses a lot of money. So they are saying, okay, we approved. We know we approved. The contractor, the vendor, the vendor who set up those things. He was a friend to the director, to Likosana. We became enemies. Bukachi has destroyed my work in this place. But I told the directors, you told me to do cost cut. So the vendor has to go. Because what I found out, he was adding his own things. In spite of these children home sponsoring his children in school, he was still stealing from them. I told the director, what do you want? Me, I'm a very honest man. What do you want? Do you keep your friend or we do cost cutting? Which one do you want? Now, the director, since he was the boss, he could not fix my manager, who was an American. My, manager was, my director was British. My manager was American. When they quarrel, we'd be very happy. Because <laughs> Americans don't talk nonsense. He went and told Mr. Clyde, this one. We have, look at the money, the list. Do you know how much money you're spending on printing? Let's buy one printer, nice one, put to the secretary, everyone will work. And then you do networking. You send it to print. We send a lot of money. I did that in LA also. These things you can cut without reducing your productivity. So go and look. You know, I'm talking, people are talking about assets. Go look at your house. Where can you cut costs? And where can you increase your income? That's the only way you're going to save your situation, even if there's inflation. If it means growing vegetables, that grow? Yes. Because you're trying to save costs so that you release finances to do what God has put you. So you only do is increase your income or reduce your cost. So look at electricity, water, transport, school fees. There's a time our children used to use school transport. We told them they would work. When they grew up, we told them, Nashikana Mikono, three of you walk to school, 
No more school transport. They won't know it. But they went to school. Yes. Because they're old, they're younger. Well, catch the costs. You know, a bus, school bus is just a fun. It's not a necessity. I saw it in Ghana. In Ghana, what they do? Remember Selim? She bought her own money. Not scooter motorcycle. She puts all her children, one in front behind, takes the school by herself. Yes. I don't want to hire vehicles. Yeah. Do you know it saves them a lot of money? We don't have scooters in Kenya. Me, I'm praying they come because they are for women. Yeah. Scooters in Ghana and Burkina Faso, they put their children, take them to school. Woe oh, unto you, accidents. Sometimes she got accidents with all her children. We helped her. They never died. We had first aid. But you know, she's a very courageous lady. Yes, Celine, yeah, she's very short and very courageous. The husband doesn't even know how, doesn't know how to ride a motorcycle. But the wife knows how to ride a motorcycle. Because she says, I'll take my children to school. Yeah. So I always say, please, when you're doing these things, pray. I worked in three organizations, pray. The Lord will show you what to do. Cut costs. Because you want to make sure you grow your income to get assets. Okay, so this, I'll go very quickly. Number one, the eight parts of manage, money management. The first one I learned when I was in LA, you have to earn money. Yeah. This one I heard from the Holy Spirit. Never teach people to give you. We never taught them to earn. The Lord told me, if you do like that, you are not a good Christian. So these churches that teach, give, 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 but you are not teach people how to earn. You are leading them in temptation. So I know, I can tell you what I've gone through. You know, I have many stories. Christians will steal to bring an offer. Someone took my business of selling books. I had a business of selling books. He came, he was selling soap, um, soap in that children's home. See, it was a good business. He told me, I can sell these books for you. I have never seen him up to today. So, I lost all my business. Okay. So, because of the pressure some people put on churches to give, people have to do weird things to prove that they have money. I'd rather you have a department of teaching business to them to earn money. Jesus says in Luke 10, 7, stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you. For the worker deserves what? His ages. Do not move around from house to house. When I reach in heaven, I'll ask Jesus, why? And pastors like moving from one house to house. <laughs> in, especially in the rural areas. Yeah. But Jesus was saying, that house is a man of peace. They will take care of you. And the food they are eating is your wages. So normally, earning, if you do a word study, wages, many scriptures, that teaches you have to earn. God created us to work, okay? Jeremiah 22, verse 13. Woe to him who built his palace by unrighteousness, his upper rooms by injustice, making his own people work for nothing, not paying them for their labor. It is bad. Well, I developed a volunteer system for Eli, okay? Because we weren't volunteers. Because we were a small organization, we needed many volunteers. So now the policy and develop, we don't have having more volunteers than the staff. And then you need to put them per diem, because per diem was to make sure they come from home to work, but no salary. Do you know we realized we better just employ them full time? Cost analysis. Why? These guys were earning more than the staff. Because you needed them to go back when you go to thicker, to do pro that they were teaching. These people can teach, but they're not staff. We changed the strategy. We just employ it, all of them. Another one you can use what? In terms. In terms of according to understanding, they are not coming for money, they are coming for experience. So internship is different from volunteers. So you can change that. But immediately you find they are valuable, please pay them. Bible says people should not work for without work, labor being paid. It's not good. First Corinthians 9:14. In the same way the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from them. Gospel. Okay, that's a difficult message for pastors like us. Okay, if you go to a church like Malawi, where the church, they have no money, they can't even pay the pastor. That scripture does not make sense. So what we tell them, maybe they should use their own resources to start a business. So Pastor Ronald has a rental property, then he has built a school, yeah, a very large school. I told him, Pastor, you have a lot of land in Malawi, and he showed me the pieces of land. I told him, oh, these are your assets. What are you going to do about it? So he built a school. He has taken all his kids to university using all his own because he had land. A lot of land in the city and in the rural areas. I told him, stop asking money from your congregation because they don't have. In fact, he's the one who has built the church. Yeah. So when God says, I will pay you back, it may not be through wages, it may be through business. Okay? 
First Timothy 5.18, for scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while he's still treading out the grain. And the worker deserves what? His wages. So the two words there, wages and work. So this is what I normally tell people when I was doing uh, helping young people. The easiest way to get a job is to volunteer. If you sit in the house praying for a job, it rarely comes. Especially in Africa, where there's so much unemployment. In Africa, because there's so much unemployment, people want to see your value by working, then they can say we need you. But so you find, I tell people, instead of doing a lot of these applications, just go to a company and tell them I'll work for free. And then look for a friend who pay your transfer. Normally they'll employ you. If they see you're available, they'll take you. I did that in Clorad Exile, it works. But if you just say, God does not give jobs, God gives work. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Can I repeat again? Yeah, yeah. God does not give jobs, he gives work. If you want work, there's work even in Jesus here. Just ask. Ask the admin department. There are things that need to be done. You will help us. And sometimes it will be a job experience to write in your CV to get what? A job. Whenever you go to the American embassy to look for the visa, it's very, now I've gone many times, I realize they really don't care which school you went. They want to know why did you volunteer. That section, they look at it in detail. How did you community service? So you tell the Kenyan to volunteer, me, I cannot work without being paid. And Ghanaians are notorious for that. The Ghanaians don't have to volunteer. They will tell you point blank. The problem I realize, you are hindering your situation to improve your CV. Because mm -hmm. that volunteer, when you fill in, you did this, you did this, it's part of your skill development. So volunteer is good. Okay? Number two, you budget. We're talking about the eight points. You budget. You have to learn to budget and planning and preparing. Proverbs 16, verse 9, in the hearts human plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. So God expects us to plan, because he doesn't live within time. Okay, we plan because we are time bound. Proverbs 21, verse 5, the plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. So if you don't, if you do things without planning, you will never see fruit. Okay. Then there's this famous scripture by Jesus, which I like. He says, Luke 14, 28, 30, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to? So how many buildings have seen that are not finished in this world? The problem was not the building. The problem the person did not sit down to make a budget and know the costs before they started building. So Jesus, I like this scripture. Jesus was talking about the cost of discipleship. But because he was a businessman, he used something he knew. Sit down and do a budget. I always tell people, me, I used to fear budgeting. And it, until I met Peter Wagner. Peter Wagner, when he teaches on faith, he says, if you say you have faith and you don't have goals, you are lying. Faith must be expressed through what? Goals. And goals must have what? A budget. You are trusting God for this. So write your goals. Don't just say, don't freeze. Because passiveness, you freeze. If I put on paper, I'll be held accountable. Just put on paper. Okay? okay. I told you I've done many fundraising. So when people tell me stories, I always, if you have never heard these my sayings, these are Bukachi sayings. Number one, don't ask God for a car if you don't have a driving license. Go and get your license, then you can talk for a car. That's the time the Lord told me, you go and get a license yourself. Okay, another one, don't ask for traveling outside the country if you don't have a passport. God does not look for passports. There are things you need to do as a step of faith. I tell God, I've done my best, now I'm waiting on the Lord. I told someone, if you want to go to school, there are three, four people in GCM, I told them, you want to go to school. I told them, you go to the school and pick, pick what? Registration. Then you fill it and start praying. In Ghana, we took so many kids to school. Because they say they don't have money. You have not even registered. Go and register, then you start praying. And sometimes the church will say, oh, we want to help people. Someone will say with a scholarship, and by the way, it's not us who are helping them. It was Ghanaians. I have a friend who's finishing university, Mordecai, he's finishing as a teacher. This is a guy who grew from poverty. His father is a witch doctor and casting. Mm. Now he's finishing university in, in a crisis. This year he graduated and get married. Mm. Do you know what? I told the board, we will push this guy until he finishes school. So he, sometimes he writes, says, I need money. I'll normally ask him a simple question. How much do you have? If he has nothing, I will not contribute a single coin. I live in Kenya. How can I help you? 
So one time he told me, I told Paku, follow up, this, this is happening now. Go and ask him how much do you have. He wrote down his budget. He says, I've raised $200. I need this. I told Paku, let's look for money and give this guy. You, you have to do something for the Lord to say, okay, you're serious. Mm. Praise the Lord. That's why I say, plans put you on a spot. I've taught my children this thing. There are things I don't pay. And they know it. I only pay things I know. I'm responsible. Anything else I want? Sweets? Chips? <laughs> Unless it's lunch for all of us. You go buy for yourself. That's my policy. But they, on Sunday, they pass. You have seen Martha. They park there and buy chips. Me, I'm not buying chips. There's food in the house. So I, I teach my children, you cannot, you cannot put me in a box. I didn't attack a chips. I want fish. It doesn't work. There are things I say you will have to pay. And then we agree with them. If you work, I'll pay. When they are young, when they are young, they'll work, I'll pay. You have to work before I pay. Go and clean the toilet. How much? You agree 50 bob. I pay 50 bob. Go and clean the dishes. By the way, when they, when they went to Ghana, the phones they bought the first time, that was their money. Me, I never bought them a phone. So I never, as a policy, I don't give children free money. I learned that from John Stopson. It's good to teach them responsibility. Mm. Okay, we'll pay for this. This one is your own idea. We'll pray for you. <laughs> if you get the money, we will help you. Because what? They have to learn to trust God. Yeah. yeah. They don't they're not going to live on my faith. The Lord will prove them very wrong. Okay? Another one, number three, there's the the area of spending and buying. Let me tell you, Israel paid their bills. Let me show the scriptures. Genesis 33, verse 19. For a hundred pieces of silver he bought from the sons of Hamar, the father of Shechem, the plot of ground where he pitched his tent. That is, Jacob, when he arrived home, bought land to say to his family. Do you know he was buying land that has been promised to him? Sometimes, this is something, sometimes to own it, you have to pay for it. As a step of faith, God, you give me this place. Jacob bought his land, but he was paying for the land 400 years later. The Lord gave them for free. Okay? So we know God fulfilled the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they bought land because of the promise. Abraham bought what? A graveyard for Sarah. Jacob bought a place for his tent. 400 years later, the Lord gave them the land. So make sure you, you pay a deposit. Okay? Deuteronomy 2.6. The children of Israel are walking the promised land. The Bible says you are to pay them in, in silver for the food you eat and the water you drink. Israel paid their bills three million people. These were not squatters in the desert. Do you know when they left Egypt they were wealthy? They had silver and gold. It was to pay their bills for 40 years. Okay? Deuteronomy 2.28, sell us food to eat and water to drink for their price in silver. Only let us pass through on foot. So when they were passing different tribes, they paid the bills. It is good to pay your bills on time. Praise the Lord. Don't remember the last story of this woman. The husband was a prophet, he died. He not paid his bills. The children are slow, sold in slavery. Don't leave bills for your descendants. It's not good. Number four, give. Okay? Now give is very famous, so you just have to be a regular giver. That's one of the other parts of money management. You give to others, you give to the poor. Okay, I'll just read the points. I don't want to read the scriptures, okay? Uh, the early church gave to the poor, Galatians 2.10. The apostle said we must never forget the poor. Uh, you give to the Jewish people, that is Romans 15, 26, 27. The Gentiles who take an offering to send the Jewish people. You give to those who teach the word of God in your midst, Galatians 6, 6. You give to orphans, widows, and refugees. So those are the areas you have to know if you are giving life, where are you? Me only say, if you want good insurance for free, learn to support the poor, the orphans, and the refugees. God says clearly, if you do like that, I will take care of you. He says, when you give to the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and God pays his debts. So I always tell people, you have seen people give to the poor, Indians, Muslims, they feed people. Have you noticed they don't die easily? Mm. Yes. That's the insurance. God says, this one cannot die, but the Christian can die. This one cannot die. Because he feeds, every Christmas, he feeds people. Imagine the Hindus feed our people Christmas, and Christians, we don't. Okay. Those principles are common grace. We have to learn to take care of people. We should have an excuse. Like when Tabitha died, why was she raised from the dead? She was helping them. 
So they went to God because she was helping us. Peter asked to raise her from the dead. Was she raised? Yes. That's the only reason she was brought back. She was helping. What can God use to bring you back? <laughs> Ask yourself. Remember the other man who came to Jairus? They told Jesus, please heal the son. Because he did what? He built a synagogue for us. You have to give God a reason. Otherwise, did Jesus go? Yes. Jairus' son was because he's supporting the Jewish people. Cornelius, why was he doing it? He was giving arms to the poor. So the angel said, because you do like this, God so and so will preach to you. You have to God sometimes give God a reason. So that's why I tell people, giving, it's a discipline. You're giving God reasons to tell God, my family has been faithful for generations. We need to talk. God is not a man. Moses said like that. God is not a man. You cannot lie. You can negotiate with the Lord. Don't be, when you look at these scriptures, you, I'm, not, I'm, not give, I'm saying you give because you want back, but there's sometimes God will say, give me a reason why I should keep you alive. And you better pray. Because God is saying in his mind, you're supposed to live 100 years, but he says 60 you are going. Because if you stay here, you cause me problems. So tell me why you should remain here. You have to give a good reason. Yeah. Sometimes you tell people, I saw in Ghana, there's a, a, a Ghanaian who came to a gate in Accra. And he told, I don't know what he was telling. He told me this funny story. His father is to help many poor people. So when they needed help, the help always come on time. Because God remembered what? What the father was doing. And the father had died. Sometimes our children struggle because we have not given seeds of righteousness mm -hmm. that goes beyond our generation. We are living for today. Sometimes giving is not for now, it's for eternity. The Bible says some people, their good works will follow them after they die. Will follow who? Their children. So I want you to challenge you, pray about it. There's also Philippians 4, missionary giving. It's good to support missionaries. I always say it's in the Bible. Do it. Bible, there's a prophet's reward. Support prophets. Don't be, don't be, don't be stuck on tithe and offering. You're doing very little compared to Israel. Israel is to give, 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 give. Okay? I only say there are many reasons God blessed Israel. Because then they had compulsory giving. Yeah, God would say, I want a sheep. These people, if God was a man, if God was a man, I'll ask him, why is he, does he take so much meat? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Then on holidays, you multiply seven times. <laughs> Those people sacrificed thousands of animals because God was teaching them what? Generosity. Yeah. Okay. Number five, save. So you have to have, saving is the will of God. So I want to read here a scripture that challenged me in the 1990s. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 14, Now I'm ready to visit you for the third time, and I will not be a burden to you, because what I want is not your possessions, but you. After all, children should not save up for their parents, but parents for their children. So I say in Africa, we need to really preach this one. 2 Corinthians 12, 14. Many times... I've seen people putting pressure on their children. There's a case I was handling online class. This girl, when she goes home, the mother quarrels her. You're not like your sister who sent me pocket money. But her job, first of all, she didn't have a job. So it's a point of contention, and there are these tribal of anger issues. So she avoided the home. The Bible said, do the opposite. His parents were supposed to do it. You didn't read that scripture. Say for their children. <laughs> Please don't put pressure to your children. What are you saving for them? Because Paul says, I don't want anything from you. When you're trying to help your children, you're not doing for profit. Mm -hmm. Seriously. If, unless you're a very bad parent. You're helping them to be better than you and to enter the destiny of God. So help them. But make sure you work to help them until they can stand on their feet. So that scripture changed my mind. I still help my parents, but I'm more responsible to help what? My children. Okay. Proverbs 21, 20. The wise store choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp there. Okay, let's read that scripture together, because you are quiet. So let's say Proverbs 21, verse 20. God knows English, so which side are you? It says, the wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools what? Eat everything. So which one are you? You have to be wise. Me, I didn't call you foolish. It's the Lord. <laughs> Do you know these scriptures used to convict me? Mm -hmm. I used to say, God, you know I can't save. The Lord told me, saving is an expression of faith. Mm -hmm. 
because you believe the word. So do it. Don't listen. Those people say, if you're not saving, you're not a Christian. Those are not good Christians. Faith is faith in God and his word, please. So if you're living in obedience to the word, you're okay. Because sometimes, you know, people will say, no, someone has saved one billion. At least they saved. They didn't steal. Yeah, so they're on God's side. And sometimes the time God needs it, the Lord tells I need my money back. Proverbs 30, verse 25. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store their food in the salmon. So I remember Pastor White preached us a message many years ago, the seasons of life. When you are born, which season is that? Is it winter, spring, summer? Which one? I think it's spring. spring. Okay. So all of us have entered. If you are here, you have already had your spring. You are born in this world. After spring comes what? Summer. Where you need to be productive. So they save during summer when you are energetic. Now in the Bible, there's something I taught many years ago. When they used to value children, they used to give an offering for 1 to 5, 5 to 20. The highest offering was 20 to 40. Then you reduce. Because God was putting productivity. There's a scripture like that. Yes. In Leviticus 27, your productive years is between 20 and 40, 50. After you reach 50, start praying. Yeah, because if you don't use those years of energy, your summer is over, my friend. Okay? So, then after summer comes what? Winter. Winter is when you start going down. When do you start getting old? Can someone tell me? Medical people. When do you start getting old? Children stop growing at what time? Boys start to stop growing at the age of 26, 27. That's when boys stop growing. Girls stop growing earlier, maybe 18, 20. But boys 26, 27, they stop growing. After that, if you're not growing, you're doing what? You're dying. So, God sits you in the clock and it's slow motion. So you never know you're dying. Tell your neighbor you're dying. Yes. Unless you have resurrection life. <laughs> you know, people don't want, Christians don't like those things. But let me tell you, every human being has a clock. And only God has the control system. So don't fight your clock. If you're a boy and you reach 26, 27, you're a new past. Guys, you finish at 18, 20. So, you give up. You know, there are things I've seen in cultures that are very... If you go to among Somalis, Turkana, Sudanese, when a lady is 30, what do they tell them? You are old, you cannot give birth to children. In Kenya, 30? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In those cultures, I couldn't talk to Tembele. It's sad, I don't like it, but they don't like it. But in that culture, when we say we are old, sorry. That's why missions are good. You learn those, you go to Mozambique, hear those stories, you keep quiet. Because those are the years of productivity. They are telling you you are old. And they treat you that they in public, they treat you as old. You cannot speak here. Okay, okay so I want to challenge you. The clock is in us. What, what are you doing in your season? Young people always say, if you're 20, you know, if you're preteens, prepare, 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 prepare. Don't, don't, be, don't be in a hurry to do anything. Just prepare for life. Prepare, prepare. 20s, prepare. When the clock starts, start running your life under the Lord Jesus. When God switches the clock, you know you are summer and winter. I will not say that because it's private. You know where you are. Hallelujah. This girl is the youngest here. Ash is okay. The others, I know your clocks are ahead. Please pray about it. Don't, Pastor White told us, don't ignore your clock. Yeah. There are times, you know the way the Bible is very funny. Ecclesiastes, it says, 11, when they reach old people, you start leaning on a stick. There's a scripture like that. There's a season to lean on a stick. Don't fight it. Some people are sitting in a wheelchair. People say, hey, I rebuke it in Jesus' name, my friend. The clock is inside you. <laughs> and Jesus is saying, I need you home. Stop rebuking me. When you partner with God's clock, you're able to live in your season. Yes. Yeah. Bible says every tree bears their fruit in their season. So don't fight your clock. There are things I cannot do now. Even if I want, the Lord will tell me you cannot. So pray about it. Okay. I've seen pastors, pastor friends. I look at somebody's trying. I say, my friend, you're old. Just stop it. Leave your children to do those things. Why are you competing with your children? 
this is something I used to say. I don't know. I, I may be wrong. I used to say that I have never. There's a missionary friend. He was going to university. I think PCA University. One child was in university. Another. One day I told him, stop competing with your children. Go stay home. Let your children finish school. When they finish, go back. So we are paying schools for you and for three children. Imagine. Of course, all of them went to university. The father went. He finished. But now you can't work because the clock is. <laughs> Papa knows him. It's funny. I, I met him at Daystar there. I told him, stop competing with your children. Let your children go to school. When they finish, you can go and do your masters. So why are you competing with your children? Okay, some of you are not yet there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes just to take a break. When you reach 50 or they are gone, you can go do PhD. Because if you do PhD at 50, I am. Okay. Do you know the average age of starting a business? There's a research from Harvard. The average age starting a business is between 55 to 62. All the international businesses we know now are started by people who had experience. It is, I tell people, if you're young, just get more experience. The founder of uh, Chips, that this Chips shop is called what? Not KFC, the other one. KFC, Kentucky. Kentucky. All those people started were old mm -hmm. because they had worked for someone. So I'll tell people, when you're young, get more experience. Unless, even if you do like Michael, Microsoft, who started like this thing when he was young, but if you look, his board was full of old people, experienced people, who knew how to run a business. You cannot tell me you can run a business at the age of 19. You have no clue what you're doing. You can't even balance accounts. You don't know how to pay taxes. Taxes is like a foreign language. You need, now that's why they hire consultants tax expert, they, you need those people to obey the law. So these are true research, I always comfort myself. This is the time to start your things. When you're 45, 50, 60 there. And then there's a report, Phyllis Harden sent me. Phyllis Harden, it's a very funny report. The most happy people are who? 60. 60s. Why? They have seen life. There's nothing else the devil is going to shock you. The devil has run out of options. <laughs> <laughs> you know, young people, let me tell you, young people always think they are better than the devil. Yeah? You can outdo the devil and outdo Jesus. It doesn't work. When you reach 50, 60, you have seen enough. There is no trick Satan can play on you. You know deception from very far, you know temptation. So that's why you have peace. And if you have saved some money, you can take a break. Mm -hmm. So that research was funny. I'll send it to the church. I was looking at that thing. You know, when you in Africa, if you are 60, 70, you start condemning yourself. You should be very happy. Mm -hmm. We need to encourage our parents who are 60, 70. Wake up, drink milk, pray with your grandchildren. Enjoy life. You can't find the devil more than you 1420s. The devil has given up. But then the devil gives up. I can tell you the devil gives up. He knows this person have tested him. The Lord has established truth in gentleness, peace, righteousness. There's no other trick. But if you young people, you think this time. So the devil said, we will play the games. So encourage yourself. Ecclesiastes, okay, number six, invest. And this one now is more serious, okay? Invest. I, I like Proverbs 31. I'm not a woman, but it's only my best chapter. <laughs> Sometimes I, take, I comfort myself by saying Proverbs chapter 1 is not talking about a woman. It's talking about the body of Christ. Because the thing she does, it says that verse 16, she considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plans what? A vineyard. This lady knew assets. She says she bought goats, bought her farm. From the farm, she did the next thing. If you read the chapter, it will really help you. And Proverbs 27, uh, let's go to Proverbs 27. I'll show you another scripture on... Uh, we use it in teaching a chair. Okay. Investment is good. You need to know your assets. Okay. So Proverbs 31 verse 16, or really the whole chapter, Proverbs 27. Let me see. Those are scriptures that I read, I meditate, I meditate, I pray for myself. Because if it's not working in your life, at that point you're a sinner. <laughs> you know, sinning doesn't mean you're, you're not blood washed. Mm -hmm. You're not just meeting the standard of God because you have fallen short of His glory. So, all of us are sinners. Okay? So, Proverbs 27. I want you to read this scripture very carefully. 27, verse 23. Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. 
Give careful attention to your hearts, for riches do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. When the hay is removed, a new growth appears, and the grass from the hills is gathered in. The lambs will do what? Provide you with milk, and the gods with the price of a field. So where do you get the price of a field? This thing is teaching me very sick. I sold my grandmother to it. When she wanted, she was a widow. She wanted to take her kids to school. She started growing green grams, and then she bought gods. The gods gives back twice per year. She took all her three children to high school. So this is what the scripture says. You want property. Buy goats. When they give birth, save the money. After some time, you buy a plot. And then that plot, you do the next thing. So that's say, pay attention to what? To your flock. Because it's what will give you assets. Now, your flock can be anything. If it's a ministry, it's a church, you have to know what your, your assets are coming from. Verse 27, you'll have plenty of God's milk to feed you and your family and to nourish your servant girls. So tell your neighbor, God's are very important. And sheep. Do you know sheep are disappearing? Yes. Especially in rural areas, Western Kenya. People are killing sheep. I don't know who's taking them. But these are the animals that give you wealth. Because they don't feed the meat on their own. Do you know if you have a plot, like maybe an eighth or a quarter, you can have sheep and goats. If you buy them a lot of leaves, they are safe. You can, I've seen them in Limuru. I've seen them in Meru, where they keep a cow even in a compound. And they get milk. These things are not difficult to do. You will get your land from the milk and from the abachoma. Just start small. Or chicken takes longer. Goats go faster. Pigs are very fast. So choose which one you want. You want pigs? They are dirty animals. You want goats? They eat on their own and they are rebellious. You start something. Don't ignore these things the Bible says. You know people read this scripture. They pass very fast. God is saying everything you have comes from an asset. It will feed you and feed your children. Where is your asset coming from? And he talked about saving and investment. So this person takes goats and buys a field. So she, she doesn't eat the money, she takes it and invests again. Okay, let's go to another scripture. Ecclesiastes 11, 2, verse 6. It says, invest in seven ventures. Ecclesiastes 11, 2 and 6. Yes, in eight, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So you are seed in the morning and at evening, you let your hands not be idle. For you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. So he's saying diversification of investment. Don't put anything in one pot. Spread your risks. Okay. If you have chicken, make sure you go goats. If you have goats, do vegetables. So that the season of life sometimes cause of risk, something may go wrong. I, in the rural areas, those of us who grow who shall go. We can see how our parents did this and it succeeded. There's no day my mom wake up and say there's no food, right. unless it's dry season. She had always options. Either there's cassava, there's potatoes, there's beans, there's milk, there's goats. You can go to the neighbor to get a matchbox. Those people had resources, but it's not money. So when you grow up because of school, we think we can be self-sufficient. Then you realize your mom was more intelligent than you. It's true. My mom actually was, I used to wonder how my mom could feed six boys comfortably. And she did it. They got married. It's just, even me, I can't think how. And the way boys eat one loaf of bread alone. One, one, one. So instead of buying bread, she give you one potato. You will not finish that one potato. <laughs> it's heavy duty to eat a potato and cassava. So switch to cassavas and potatoes in your house. People don't have to eat bread. So they eat one potato, they give up. And even if they do it consistently, they hate bread. Yeah, they just say, hey, this is not food. So I want to challenge you, have these options. What are you really investing in? Yeah. How investment is in the Bible. Then Luke 19, 13 to 26, I'm not read the parable of the talents. Jesus rewards those who went and invested. Okay, then number seven, retirement. There's retirement in the Bible, but not the way people teach. Okay. There's only one scripture I talk about retirement. That is Numbers 8, 24, 25. It says, this applies to the priests. Men 25 years old or more shall come to take part in the work at the tent of meeting. But at the age of 50, they must retire from their regular service and work no longer. So if you do the timeline of a priest, 
uh, a priest was trained for five years. From the age of 20, you reported for duty. You are trained for five years. At 25, you are deployed to the temple. When you reach 50, you stop doing the slaughtering of animals because too much work, then you mentor the young generation. So that's how God planned ministry to be. I always tell people, I've seen, because I've seen, if you, are, if you reach a particular age, you can't help young people. Something is wrong with you. Something's really wrong with you. Because the energy you need at 50 is not there. Just invest in the next generation to be more fruitful. So this is a retirement scripture, but it's not what people are saying. They, they just left the regular service, and then they started mentoring what? The young priests. Okay. And let me tell you, like I told you, those slaughtering those on my breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, God eats a lot of meat. It was tiresome. Those noises are noisy. God's making noise. Some of them urinating on you. Others screaming at you. It was tiresome work. Me, I don't think I can enjoy slaughtering animals 24 hours. So you need a holiday. Tell your person you need your neighbor, you need a holiday. Yes. Sometimes you just need a break to do something that God wants you to invest in the next generation. So there's no other scripture on retirement in the Bible. Okay? Then there's this one, Psalm 71, verse 18. Psalm 71, verse 18 says, Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God. Okay? Till I declare your power to the next generation and your mighty acts to all who are going to come after me. So you're not supposed to die until you do those two things. Which are the two things? Declare, Declare the mighty of acts of God to the next generation. We have to be faithful to pass the next generation. Then the next one, Isaiah 46 verse 4, it says, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he, and he will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. So God promised to take care of the old, but he doesn't give you the strategy. So I have to tell this, there's a time we were teaching, I was sharing a medical missions conference, so I think someone was teaching on the, the great concern, you know. I was hungry, I was sneezing. Then I told people, that scripture does not tell you what to do. It doesn't tell you how to do it. it just tell you what. Jesus never tell you how, how you have to go back and ask him. Like if he says, I was, I was hungry and you fed me. There are many ways of feeding hungry people. You can do the Old Testament way. When you harvest it, they come and harvest for themselves. That's one strategy. Another one, you can empower them. Like in Ghana, we did farming with this family. Uh, we gave them all the inputs. We told them, when you, but you work. When you harvest, you share 50-50. So the whole half of the harvest became theirs. Ours. It was not like profit. After three seasons, she broke poverty. So we partnered with her because she was a, a wife of a pastor who had chased her away because they married a witch. <laughs> Ghana, Ghana. And the husband was a Bible translator. Imagine he married a witch after. The wife took off, plus all her children. So now when we meet them in the, we say we'll help you, but we'll not do everything. So there are many ways of empowering people who are poor. Don't be used to giving handouts. You can tell them, like the Old Testament, I will harvest, you come and finish. Everything you find at home is to do it, it's ours. Whenever mom harvested, she'll tell us, go and collect everything. Anything you get is yours, you try it, you sell it, it's your pocket money. It's the Old Testament. Or you partner with them to invest, then you split the cost. Mm -hmm. Or you tell them, come and work with me, I will train you. When you finish, I'll give you money to start your own business. That's what Maurice Cerullo used to do. Maurice Cerullo, everyone who worked with him, when you, you, when you were leaving the ministry, he gave you $100,000 to start your own ministry. So there's a guy in India, he gave him money, 100,000. He has the largest television station. Omar Cabrera in Argentina, he gave him $100,000, 30 own ministry. And that guy had the largest church in Argentina at that time, 90,000 people. He said, I want to invest in you. Then when you're ready, I'll give you money to start. So you have to look for a way. Don't do what people do. Handouts are as easy. You know, handouts are very easy, by the way. And it's a shortcut. <laughs> because the other takes a lot of work. To follow up. So sometimes I tell people, walk, walk with people. Okay? I don't know how I'm talking those things. Okay. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. Talk about old age, okay? Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. Go to the hand, use slogan. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer and ruler. Yet it stores its provisions, what? In summer and gathers its food at harvest. So when I grew up, in my, in my farm, we had a granary. Remember a granary? Yes. Mm. If we 
build a granary with the, the special uh, things you use, you put in the middle of the chamber, when you have it, you put everything. During the dry season, you just take a bit, you take to the portion of it. God is saying, do that for the land. Make sure you have a granary where you are trying to store. When I was young, I would open an account, I open an account with a post bank where you cannot withdraw money for five years. Then I opened one with ICA for 10 years. I could not touch that money. And you know, I was only contributing 950 shillings per month for my life in China. Thankfully, I never died. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got, I finished, I went back, I told the manager, Sam, I need my money. He told me your money has made so much profit, they gave me 180,000. Good money, that's what you used to go to Ghana. So I always say, even 500 shillings in 10 years, that is a lot of money. And people despise it. What I'm trying to say, when 1990s I did the research with a friend, the Lord told me anything in the Bible is faith. Mm -hmm. Planning for your life, it's part of faith. You will grow old. You will get sick, which is the next one, okay? Don't say, this is not God, this is the devil. Let me tell you, Jesus paid taxes. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid his disciples. He had to have a plan. Let's not live... We are in this world, not in heaven. In heaven, I think even you have to go get the food yourself. You have to go to the river of life, get out food. You cannot be sitting there and wait for the Lord to feed you. So sometimes Christians struggle with this, but I tell people it's not a nice idea. Okay? Number last one, which is the most risk, uh, the difficult one, deal with risk, insurance. You know insurance is the Bible. So I'll give you a scripture. Proverbs 22, verse 3, Proverbs 27, verse 12. It repeats the same thing. It says, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. So, I know English. Hallelujah. Yeah. The prudent see what? Yeah. And, but the simple ones, this Bible is very nice. The other one says the foolish ones. So, if you don't take risk management in the Bible, uh, insurance is built on risk. This thing could happen, so protect yourself. Like with health, Take NHIF. If it's your house you really love, take domestic insurance. If it's a car, they will not even give you an option. They will force you. <laughs> it's a required by the law to insure your car because you may cause an accident. So risk is not anti-God. It's a management system because we live in a fallen world. Accidents happen. So when you happen, when an accident happens, you don't want to lose everything. So I always tell people, if I have money, me I always prefer taking comprehensive insurance for a car. Because if you have an accident, they pay 80%, you go and pick a new car. Sacrifice. If you take, like the van, we pay how much? Sometimes 70. If you take 70 divided by 12, you can manage that money so that you have an accident, you don't have to go and call all the police. Just go take a photo, take the insurance, pay. Because it's comprehensive. If you have third party insurance, you'll have call the police. Who was on the wrong? Who did not do the right thing? So sometimes the police are bribed, they leave you there. But comprehensive, they cannot. So I always say, it looks bad. You know, some people say insurance is free money. It's not free money. It's a risk you're protecting. I always say people, if you have children up to the age of five, take medical insurance. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have NHIF. They will get sick with malaria, sneezing, everything. Protect yourself so you don't have to pay these big bills in the hospital. If you can afford, take some money and put insurance. NHIF is very good these days. Unless you have long-term disease, it covers everything. But Christians don't want to hear. They say that cannot be God. How can I give a child my free money? It's not free money. It's a protection so you don't lose everything. Have you seen people? There's a friend of mine. He was a guard at our gate. Uh, he was transferred to Kajiado. Then I think the father died. When the father died, you know now, when our father died or a mother in our culture, you have to slaughter big animals, so they had to sell land. I'm asking you, why are you selling your own land? Why not sell your father's land? He sold his own land. Because it's the first one. I told you, my friend, me, I will not sell land for my father. Who has died? How? So he sold the land, he called me. Then when he was in Kitengela, one time he was driving a motorcycle, uh, doing motorcycle. Then he started feeling sick. He went to hospital and told him he has diabetes. He was immediately to leave Nairobi, go to Bugoma. When he's in Bugoma, he starts calling me, Pastor, I'm very sick. I'm in hospital. So he had to raise money to pay the bill. Had he taken what? Yes. 
when he was doing motor riding. Yeah. Sometimes he calls me. I can't help you because I'm wondering. First of all, you sold your land, but he's very bitter that he sold his own land. Mm -hmm. Don't don't sell land for someone who's dead. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. They're already dead, bury them. If you can't bury them, take them to Nairobi City Council and bury them for free. Where can, how can you sell your property for someone who's dead? I don't understand. Okay, you guys don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> if, if it happens, you remember this message. Yeah, when my mom died, they say we have to slaughter cows, because as a lady, a woman's leader in church, you have to slaughter maybe two. My brother was very wise. I've shared this story. He went to Kisumu and bought a lot of meat, a lot of meat, and loaded it and put cooks from Siaya, who don't speak my mother tongue, and told them to take care of this meat during the funeral. And we gave them the keys. No one opens them. Do you know everyone ate until the food remained? My uncles came slowly, because now they fear us. You know, our culture says you have to slaughter cows. Your mom, I told my uncle, two uncles, one is a pastor. You already have enough meat. You're not slaughtering anything. Because I was avoiding sacrifices. My brother is brilliant. He hired cooks. No, I've never seen cooks in a funeral. He hired cooks for three days. Bought them food. Lord, he, he had a truck. Lord, a truck. Ugali, everything, chapati. And then you're going to cook for people for three days. Me, I told you, my brother, you're brilliant. We were never disturbed in that funeral. People ate until the food remained. And then after the funeral, we gave everyone transport. It was funny. My pastor, my auntie said, me, we have never seen such a thing. I told him, yeah, I told my auntie, this is the goodness of serving the Lord. When I wanted to serve the Lord, you rejected me. I told her, I told her this is the advantage of serving God. You don't drink. Now they appreciate me. Yeah, but they, they repented. We had a, I called a family meeting. I told them we have to reconcile. The way you treated my mom was wrong. She was a widow. You are not a widow. Why are you disturbing her? Say, we are sorry. We are sorry. You know, we can talk because we pay their food, pay their transport. And actually, we have to die support my auntie. I called her the other day. I saw they sent her that money. You know what? We are trying to show them it's not in vain to serve the Lord. Yeah. Even my elder brother was shocked. Yeah, I told him, you just travel and pay everything. Let me tell you, it's good to tell people God is not that kind of God people are taught. We serve the God of Israel. Okay? So I'm trying to say it's called risk. Risk. I'm trying to encourage you. Let me read again. Look in your financial management. Number one, how are you earning? Start praying God, teach me how earning money is a responsibility from the Lord to us. That's one of the way we multiply on this earth. Okay, so the first one, earn. Number two, budget. Number three, learn how to spend. Pay people's bills on time. Number four, give, be a generous giver. Number five, save. Number six, invest. Number seven, retire. Plan for your retirement. When you reach 50, it will work. <laughs> Number eight, take insurance. Do not say this is not the Holy Ghost. It's in the Bible. So from today, if you say it's not the Bible, you one day you'll have to explain to Jesus because you have this message. Jesus took all those things when he was alive. Jesus was very nice. When, before he left his disciples, he told them, I will not give you as an offer. Jesus took care of them. I will send the Holy Spirit. Jesus never let people hang him. He, took, he told his mother, John will take care of you. Because why? His brothers are not saved. So he didn't trust them. John, take care of my mom. This Jesus was doing planning for his death. It's good to plan those things. I know Africans who don't like writing wills. But we don't. We say wishes. You know, my mom, she never wrote a will. But she said, before I die, make sure you do this, this. Please pay attention when they are saying those things. That is their will. Yeah, let's be, let's people who can be stewards of everything God has given us. I have taught these things, my brothers, I'm on my case. Hey, my younger brothers. One is a businessman. One I told him the other, the other day, you're working, I want you to buy your own land. I called him, yeah, you're going to buy land and you're going to help you, but make sure you buy land. You have to help you because sometimes as Christians, we don't see it in the Bible. That's why I don't believe the old gospel religion. You have people say the old gospel that teaches you to go to heaven? No, Jesus doesn't want to go to heaven. He wants you to be faithful here. <laughs> Please hear me. The Lord wants us to be faithful here before you go to heaven. You already said you go to heaven, but don't teach people just don't mind these things of the world. 
and then insurance comes. You know, you guys, you should thank God you live in Kenya. I've seen people in Europe, in USA. USA is a funny country. If you don't have money, you will starve. Everything you pay, mm. everything, until you get afraid. Mm. Uh, there's nothing free. You want to, like, you go to the airport, you have to push your bags. Mm. Remove money to get the car. I'm already a passenger, <laughs> but I have to pay for a car. Mm. Unless the airport specifies, you will pay my friend. You will pull your bags, there's a time I to pull my bags. They are heavy. And no one comes to say, I'll help you. They expect you to pay. Mm. You should thank God for the African community God has given us. Mm. No one can see struggling in the airport and leave you there. Mm. There, they'll just be smiling. The security guys. I tell you, pay, you need to pay. It's a very capitalistic system. You cannot survive in America without money. Unless, even if you live on the streets, you need money. Unless people donate, you starve there. So I realized we need to know these things when you hear that uh, these countries have put these systems is to protect their people. The first time I learned this thing in detail, I used to quarrel. There's a time I was praying in the 1990s. The Lord told me, if you continue giving your tithes and offering, you will die poor. Hey, I told God, that doesn't sound right. So the Lord told me, what happens to the rest is also important. Mm -hmm. So for one year, I started finance. One year. What, when if you give your tithes and offering, what remains? If you're not saving, you're not spending, you're not, you will die poor. I really remember our neighbor. Wili alisema alikuwa na patiana church pesa. Na kasama hizi kuja kanisa kwa sababu pastor ni mudangani. You know that story? This is a neighbor they had. The one who said they cannot come to church because the pastor is to ask their money. You remember that story? Hey, me, I don't know I'm your pastor accused of taking people's money. No, 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 no. Me, I'll help you. Help you, help you. Because it's not right. Like sometimes when I see people teaching those things on TV, I'm saying, just look at people. People remove everything. People sacrifice everything. But when you look at their life, it has never changed. Because they have never been taught asset management, building resources for the kingdom. So people think God is only happy when you're giving. God is interested in what remains. Tell your neighbor, what remains is very important. If you don't pay insurance, my friends, Pastor Njoki knows our policy. We never say, people will come to us in church. Oh, I need to pay this hospital bill. We never tell them, do you have an HIF? If they don't, we will force them. Because you start taking advantage of church. Mm -hmm. I need money, church. I need to go to hospital, church. I need school fees, church. Do you know that doesn't make sense to God? And then, you know, when I told you the first time when people have, some Christians cannot manage what? How much money? Remember the example? Okay, let me repeat. If I give a Christian a few years ago 1,000 bucks, hey, he not even sleep. He's busy planning how many sweets he buy. <laughs> some Christians, when they get money, they get excited. Mm -hmm. So you have to disconnect from money to manage. Because if someone gave you half a million, I don't know whether you sleep diving. If I give you 500,000 cash check, what should you do? Stop. Okay, how she's training business. She went to student temple. Some Christians will not sleep. They start praying the whole night, having a list of the shoes they need to buy. How many gods there? In fact, they will not remember gods, only clothes, TV. What are you doing? That's an asset. You should invest. invest. Tell God this money I want to invest so that I have constant income. I tell people, if you had it, one time I was given one hand, one million, I was shaking like a leaf. <laughs> My auntie told me to go carry to the bank. I had to dodge my tattoos. But later I realized one million is very small. Yeah. So when you have to grow, the Lord trusts you more. You have to be faithful. The Lord told me, faithfulness is not giving tithes and offering. It's everything. Give, save, budget, be a steward. Don't let money control you. Be a good disciple. Some of us are praying, you know, the reason I'm teaching this, some people are praying unto the end time financial, and to finance the gospel. And then when the God gives you 500,000, you don't come to church. <laughs> so how can God trust you? Or if, how can God make you a treasurer, like Daniel or Joseph, to manage the store, treasurer of the country? 
Do you know one of the most person that really impressed me? You know the managing director of Cop Bank, Cooperative Bank? You know him? Mm -hmm. He's born again. Mm -hmm. He's a treasurer in, in uh, Valley Road for many years. Do you know how much has helped the Christians? If you want to have a soft loan that is not fault, go to Cooperative Bank. Mm -hmm. He has a policy, don't disturb Christians. But he's faithful. You know, he has been so long in that bank, they can't sack him. Because he brings them money. Then he bought another bank the other day, Kingdom Bank. It's also making money. Immediately, God is started making money. They have given more shares and more shares. They can never sack him. Do you know what he implemented? In that bank, they pray and fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kenya House prayer will go and organize prayer and fasting, and it was compulsory for every staff. Whether you believe in fasting or not, you have to. Because <laughs> he said, I'll have to introduce Christian values in this bank. That's how that bank has survived. It's the fourth largest bank in the country. So people look at him, me and say, I see the man of God. I know some people have gone to ask you for help. You say, okay, I can help you. Because he has the resources. But if you look, he is a good manager of resources of a whole bank. The president, no, Cop Bank is a parastatal. He cannot be sacked. He brings money to the government. I want us to be like that. I want us people God can trust. If either you're creating money or managing or distributing, be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. This money we are saying God will bring for the gospel. Me, I don't know the Christians will be in church when the money arrives. <laughs> yeah, train your heart. Train your heart to be a steward. Me, I budget everything. I write down everything. I write down every cost. I have to know where my money is going. It's my policy. Some John helps me now. I have to know what is happening because I don't want to to be asked you had money and the money disappeared. That's not a good way to run a family. Tell your neighbor, that's not a good way. Don't tell someone I don't know. There's nothing like I don't know in this world. You know, when you hear money has, stolen, lost in, money has been lost in this country, I can tell you the truth from what I know. Money is never lost. It's in someone's bank account. Money cannot disappear, my friend. Paper. So people don't want to tell you the truth. Also, I'm sorry, stealing from the central bank. The central bank knows where the money is, my friend. But because it's their friend, they will not say. Mm -hmm. Don't do that to church. Yeah, God will look, 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 look. Uh, this is something I've really trained myself. Have I made mistakes yet? Nwajia made mistakes. The children some have made mistakes. I said, LIA LI is when I really learned. Okay. Then the Lord told me, if you are faithful, I will trust you with more. You have to be faithful. Please, you have to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been praying these things the Lord cannot see because when he looks at faithfulness, you don't say, <coughs> you don't tithe, you don't have an HIF, 500 bob only. <laughs> so the Lord says, if I give this guy 10% more, the guy will go back to clubbing. I will lose my disciple. So the Lord says, no more money so that you stay in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Some of those things God is doing to you is for your protection. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to lose you. And you should thank God. Okay. Praise the Lord. Can you stand up and pray? It's three o'clock. I'm praying that you implement. I've implemented everything I'm teaching. I have implemented in my life. I tell God I will do my best to learn. So that I don't want to get stuck. And I'm praying our children will learn. And whatever the young people who are like a whole life, they are working with. We want to teach them these things. These things are doable. These are not mystery. You, you can teach people. You can teach people. You can tell. Blake is the one who taught. Blake me taught. He was mentoring a young person from a broken family. So you had to teach him budgeting, 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 budgeting to restore him. Before now, he told him, okay, you can run your own house. He picked us, young man. We had no parents in America. He said, you stay in my house. But all the money you get, you bring to my account fast, fast. Then we sit down and talk about it. Do you know the young man learned? So you can take a young person and say, okay, when you get money, it passes through my account. Then we can talk. Because sometimes people don't know. Our parents never taught us. They never had teens to keep money left. Saving the village. So if they don't know, but they, they don't know. Then if you put them saving Mushwari, you're tempting them. You know Mushwari? They'll put, and then withdraw. <laughs> put. <laughs> Me, I lock it. I lock it. I will not touch it. Okay? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. These things I've taught my children, but they have taught, taught them one. You do this. You do this, then we talk after six months. Then when you have the money, we can start talking. But if you don't have the money, me, I will not help you. 
I'm not supposed to carry the mantle for my children. They have to carry their mantle. And I'm very strict that one. The one who has learned the hard way is Emma. Emma now is saving. Me, I tell Emma, that one I'm not buying. So you know what I did? I took a number in my name. So when she works, I pay in that number. She cannot withdraw without my pin. <laughs> So the a time she needed a phone, we agreed we'll contribute. When they feel, I told her, now you can go buy your, I took a go buy your phone. Me and not buy your phone just like that. Why? You're not in school, you're not in, there's nothing, you're not a child anymore. Then recently she told me something, I told her, Emma, that one is your business. That one is not my thing. And Emma has a very sweet tongue. Uh, you're talking, you're not going to agree. So she has a project she's saving for, she's paid. I told her, you save, when you reach there, we can talk. The reason is, how will she run her family? Okay, I don't want to go those details today. There are many times, let me put in a nice African way, when I was growing up. Eh? When you hear someone's daughter, our son has been returned home, investigate what happened. <laughs> we just put it like that. The mistake may not be them, it's the part. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's a secret. Please talk to the adults here, they'll help you to understand. <laughs> eh? Yeah, there are many things that are happening they cannot manage. So, because they are not taught, don't teach your children. Teach me. If I decide for you, Kamodo knows, you meet Kamodo in the wedding, you meet Chris, Navigator's country director, maybe he's coming. I will decide for them. You do what I'm saying. Normally, I'm not a harsh person. Hallelujah. So I'll say, I'll say the Bukachi way, but if you don't do it, I'll drop you like a hot potato. Me and other issues. If I tell you one, two, three, you not do it, I'll just leave you slowly, you continue. Yeah? The other day, I got a guy, a friend of mine, he, I looked for him, you have to come, come for a wedding. He sent me a message, he lives in Australia, he's, a, he's an evangelist. And I'm like, how did I, they would become an evangelist in Australia? So I'm, I'm on his case. He was in a cult, I rescued him from a cult in campus. God said, radical, he's an engineer, civil engineer. Because I'll tell them, my friend, it would work. Me, I talk softly, but it will work. If I realize it's not working, I drop you like a hot potato. Because me, I don't know how to beat people. I'm like Dr. Flores, I'll pray you out. Because let me challenge you, help people. The young people, and even our adults, even our family members who cannot manage their finances. Every time, hello? And you can know when the call is coming. Sometimes they know supernaturally the money has come to your phone. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I think Bosca has been going through that. I say, this is funny. Mm -hmm. I tell them I'll pray. They not pick my frequency. Yes. <laughs> How do they know? <laughs> Hello? Hello? I need this? And sometimes they lie. Mm. Me always tell my brothers. Wait, tell me with a detail. Details. My brothers no longer call me by, but they no longer call me. They know I will not agree. Because we have to help them to be stewards. Mm -hmm. When I see them running their families, take, paying the bills of their children, I say, well, it was worth it. Mm -hmm. And if you are here, you're struggling in these areas, start praying. Mm -hmm. Start praying for yourself. Lord, teach me to save. Teach me how to invest, even if it's starting with goats or chicken. I have to invest so that God can see you increase, increase, increase. Okay. Father, we just want to thank you. Father, we have called us to be stewards of the kingdom. I pray that, Father, even as you are trusting the church with resources, I pray like Joseph and Daniel, and even our Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, that, Father, we will be faithful. Lord, help us not to teach people untruths, but we'll teach people the truth of money management so that we can promote the cause of the gospel. Father, I pray, help us to be faithful. Help us to be faithful in giving, receiving, earning, buying, selling, Lord. Help us to be stewards. Yes. That we should never be controlled by money. Yes. Money will not be as master of our lives. But we shall be good stewards that can be trusted with much. Father, I pray we will grow in this area. Individually and corporately. That you can trust us these resources to promote the causes of your kingdom. To disciple the nations, to feed the poor, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord. Open our minds to see that it's never about money. It's about the condition of our hearts, Lord. <laughs> Creating us a heart of integrity, a 
heart of faithfulness. Let the fruit of the Spirit fill our lives. Lord, fill us with the spirit of faithfulness. Faithfulness, faithfulness, Lord. Convict us where we have need to bring correction in our lives. And teach us even how to help us. Lord Jesus, we love you and we exalt you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I hope it has helped you.